Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. A lot of time, if you have some bright cut next to the stone or underneath the stone, it's going to make your stone look brighter in your jewelry design. Today, I'm going to show you the technique how to do this fancy cut to bright up your gemstone in your jewelry cat design with Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we start working on it, this type of a setting I've been using in many of my videos, so I'm not gonna repeat it there. And if you are interested in download a stone to use, you are welcome to sign up the newsletter and so you can get a free uh, stone model there. Now the second thing is I want to mention is we do have this heart shape. In the real world, it will have the graver cutting into this triangle area. So we try to mimic that engraving cut there in this model. So we're going to starting with this setting is already arranged for the three prong setting and have a stone setting in place. And then we are going to create its heart. Now coming into the side, the structure wise, I'm going to draw a heart shape, a small outline, and then kind of coming over here, giving a very general shape of a heart there. And then you can always adjust if you feel like that's not ideal. You can move in those control point to make it into the shape that you like. All right. And then the second thing is I need to somehow giving some sort of the thickness there. And, uh, but let's making it into the hard shape first. We want the uh, coming into the mirror, type it zero and having something like that. And also we wanted to trim each other for the extra there and also the extra there. Okay, and let's join it. Depends on how thick you want it to have your border. We're going to offset this guy and coming inside a lot more. And I may want to have 1.5 and see how that goes. All right, so maybe this need to be talking a little bit more. And before we continue a design, we always, always wanted to check if overall size is correct. So uh, right here in between here and here is a millimeter and, and see if that is the size that you wanted before you continue to working on. All right, so what I like to do is kind of uh, scale it down a little bit more because we are actually not exactly going to use those two curves. We're going to use their offset and I will show you why. Okay, so I'm going to hiding this guy right here. All right, so this is the shape we are going to work with and you may want it to have an ink size a little bit rounder, but we can adjust that later. Um, at this point, I need to figure out how many sections do I want it to have. And for this one, I'm going to have a smaller section so it will go quicker on the demonstration. So let me explode this guy and actually join back just half of them. So then we have two curves. You can always rebuild if you feel like the curve is not uh, exactly what you want. So let's say we want to have 10 here and we want to rebuild to the 10. Uh, make sure the degree is 3 there. Or another way you can make it smoother is by using the command smooth. And then you can tweak it by moving those point, uh, moving this uh, bar up and down, right or left to get it smoother or something like that. Okay, so now this is what we want. I want to define it how many section that I need. So I'm going to use the command divide. And I want to divide it into maybe um, a section. So you're going to see the point of the eight over there. And we're going to do it one more time. We want to do a section there. And those are the guidelines for us. So if I have a line in between, go from point to the point, and I will simply get the line something like this. So I'm going to uh, locking everybody beside the point, uh, the line there that we have. So it's easier for us to take a look on it. Now, if I want to turn on all the control point on this one and on every other straight line, I'm going to, let's take a look on the side. I'm going to have them go up somewhere like this. 
And then on the other side, we are going to pick up this point and every other point there. And this one too gonna go up somewhere similar like this. So those is going to be the guideline for us to play with. That's starting with the first one. Going snapping to the end point, end point, and end point there. So then I have a triangle there. But where is my rail to sweep? It's going to be between here and here and here and here. All right, so let's give it a try. We are going to do sweep to rail and you got rail one, rail two, and this is your cross section. And you will get that first cut there. And if we using the command cap and then this will become a poly solid surface. So the same idea is going to apply on all of them. So we're gonna snap in here and here coming back with the straight line and we're gonna draw another line right there and that's using the sweep to rail you got rail one rail two cross section and something like this now you may notice that this is a huge uh, straight line there and the shape it's not really follow the um, the hard shape and that's why we are going to trim it later for this demonstration i'm making the a but in fact i will make it more double so that way you will get a smaller cut and that will fitting into the outline better so i'm going to speed speed it up here And we're gonna use the cap command for all of them, right? So the very last one I did that way. You can actually split all of this in half so that way you can meet at this point like what I did there. If that worked better for you, you can uh, work like that way. And we are missing one over here. So I'm going to again making half of it by drawing this triangle there. And we are going to use the sweep to rail, rail one rail two and cross section all right so we'll get something like that again we want to use the cap command to close it so now we have all of them all we need to do is select all the um, poly surface and we want to mirror to the other side and something like that so let's unlock those original curve so let's pick up those curve and we want to join them and let me turn them into the red colors easier for you to see okay so if you do like this facet and that's fine but i do want them to uh the edges a lot more smoother so you won't catch their hair or something like that so what i like to do is i want to cut it in a little bit so that is going to come in offset the curve for distance maybe uh 0.3 millimeter so that way i will cut all the sharp corner there this one i just need to uh come in just a little bit maybe 0.1 millimeter and then you got something there okay so now with those two new curves we are going to the solid extruded planar curve and go straight like this okay so that is a new shape there all we need to do is bring up and then uh, i want to bowling intersect which mean all of this shape and this shape it's going to intersect and it will cut the extra off so now we have a clear line there this one i do want it to have some sort of a thickness so let's bring back the stone and see if the size is fitting well and we can move a stone down a little bit something over there Okay, so it looked really nice and tight on the design. And then we're gonna click on this curve and this curve one more time. And then we wanna extrude it. This time we wanna extrude it going down uh, on the bottom as long as you cover where the prong and the coolant. And make sure your coolant is not sticking out like that. All right, so I'm going to bring in somewhere there. Okay, so this will be the button and um to support our stone and protect the stone tip 
there. But I just, it's a little bit too much metal and it's look really um, heavy, which gonna cost you something in the production. So I'm going to creating a box with this box just coming into the middle and going to move it down a little bit like this and simply rotate it 45 degree there right so that will be my color and I also want to making a duplication there and that can be any angle that look nice to you so somewhere it's going to be something like this maybe a little bit longer in this case because I do want to reduce the weight of the metal that saved me some money on the production all right, so and then this one I'm going to mirror to the other side like that. Okay, so all we need to do is boolean difference this button with the square that we just creating. So that will creating the opening there. And if that opening that uh, that you see the button of you know the setting there, we simply just going to trim it one more time or boolean difference one more time. And this time we want to move this just a little bit above the opening we just made and with this setting there we want it to be boolean difference from this guy here okay so that way we will have this let's take a look on the render view and that's how we are gonna have this earring i hope this video give you some inspiration to do your jewelry cat design and I have a lot more trick and tip I wanted to share with you. If you are a beginner to the jewelry cat design, I have a stone setting mini course is completely free for you. In this course, I will discuss the basic stone setting knowledge and how to create a prong set like the one in the video and show you how to alter it into your own custom design. It's completely free. So check out the link at the description below and I hope to see you in the course. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.